What's going on everybody? Welcome to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we're going to build, ironically enough, a toilet paper cabinet made from some locally sourced rough sawn pine, including some hand painted details. Check it out. So this is a small commission project and first I need some lumber to build this thing out of. I'm going to start off with a quick trip to my local hardwood dealer JW Hardwoods where I'm going to pick up a nice piece of rough sawn pine. I decided to use pine for this project because it's easy to work with, it's easy to mill up, and it's fairly inexpensive especially if you buy it rough sawn and have the tools to mill it up to final size. Plus the customer requested a darker colored stain and I just like the way pine takes a stain so that's what we're going with. Our first order of business is going to be to clean up the surfaces of this rough sawn pine. After planing the faces smooth, I'm going to break it down using a circular saw so the pieces are a little bit more manageable. Now I can easily run them on the joiner to clean up one edge. And now with that jointed edge against the fence on my crosscut sled, I'll begin breaking all these pieces down to their final size. I always save little offcuts like this. They make great mixing sticks for epoxy or finish or anything like that. I've got a whole pile of these laying around. They work awesome. So now that everything is cut to the final size, let me show you really quick what we have. We have a top and a bottom piece. The bottom will be offset about an inch and a half from the very bottom. This piece will become the door. That'll be mounted on some hinges. Then we have a couple side pieces. And then finally, a top piece that'll get fastened down there right there. We're not gonna do anything fancy for the joinery. We're just gonna glue it together, we'll reinforce everything with dowels. But before I can do any assembly, I wanna cut a little relief in the bottom that's gonna kinda create two separate legs. to be a nice little detail as well. Now I can start getting this thing glued together. First I'm going to glue the top and bottom in place. For some reason the camera did not want to show you <laughs> me gluing this up. So I've already got it clamped up and nice and square, but all I've done is clamped the top and the bottom piece to the back. I've got the door piece in place. It's not glued. It's just there to keep everything nice and square. I don't know what happened to the camera. Shut off. I don't know. It's acting kind of crazy. But anyway, we're going to give this a few minutes of time to dry and then we'll glue on the sides. Now some of you may be wondering why I decided to just butt joint these together. Well, I want to try to keep this project super simple, something that anybody can build really with just a circular saw, maybe a jigsaw. You don't need anything fancy. Yes, I'm using a table saw and a bandsaw, but all of these cuts can be done by hand with a circular saw, a jigsaw, a fret saw, any kind of simple cutting tool can be used to create something like this. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing fancy joinery. If you want to do that, yes, it's totally cool and you can absolutely take this as far as you want. But the main point of this project is to keep it simple. You can make cool stuff in your shop, in your garage, on your porch, whatever space you have with just a couple of simple tools you can build cool stuff. Don't worry, we're gonna reinforce these with some dowels. It's gonna be plenty strong, but that is the reason I'm keeping this super simple. You guys can build this stuff. If you don't have a whole shop full of tools, it's not a problem, you can make cool things. So that's the reason. And now I can glue the two side panels in place. Again, no fancy joinery, just gluing and clamping them in place. Oh yeah, and we'll clamp this guy in place. Put 
let it dry. And now I can begin laying out where I'm going to put some dowels. First I'll center punch all the marks and then drill them out using my drill press. Now we'll just add a little bit of glue, tap the dowel in place, and cut it off with a flush cutting saw. Before I drive the dowel in, I'm just using a piece of sandpaper to lightly sand a small bevel at the end. This helps get it aligned and get started into the hole. Now I'm going to move on and work on the top. Before I fasten the top down, I want to put a decorative chamfer around the edge to do that. Really simple. I'm just going to use my small router table, but if you don't have a router table, not a problem. You can just do that by hand with a hand plane. Now I don't want to glue this top on all the way across. So I'm just going to put a small bead of glue right in the center and then we'll attach it with some screws. This will allow it to expand and contract without cracking. So now I'm at the point where I can install the hardware, the hinges for this door. The only problem is right now the door is a snug fit. There is no play which will allow it to swing open. So I need to take a little bit off of the thickness of the door to give it some room so that it can swing. I've got these little aged brass hinges that I think are going to look really cool on there. They're not very big, so it's going to fit on our material. It's going to work awesome. So, quick change of plans. You guys ever pick up the wrong parts at the store? You look at the design of something and the size and you think it's going to work fine, but then you realize that it's not quite the right piece. Let's change the plans. I got to go back to the store and get some more hinges. Hang tight. All right, I'm back from the store. Time to install hinges. <coughs> to drill the holes perfectly centered, I'm using one of these self-centering spring-loaded drill bits. These things make quick work of installing hardware for hinges, latches, anything you need to drill a centered hole on. These are amazing. In order to help minimize breaking off screws for hardware, I always recommend at least starting them first with a screwdriver by hand. Don't go straight to the impact driver or you'll increase the risk of breaking a screw. Now I'm just clamping a block to the back. I need to drill a hole all the way through the piece so that I can attach a little pull so you can open the door. The block is going to help reduce tear out on the back side of this hole. So now, when we remove the block, we got a nice clean hole. We can now install this little cool wooden knob. Bam! That's cool. Now before I take this door back off, I need to mark out where I want to put a little magnet in here that's going to help keep the door closed. To mark out where it's going to go, I'm going to take a little tiny brad nail and cut the head off, making it really short. Now I'm just going to use a pair of pliers and stick it down into the wood. Now when I close the door, it's going to hit on that. Give me a nice little divot right where I need to drill. On the door side, I'm going to glue in just a little small magnet. And on the other side, I'm going to install a screw that's flush with the wood. That way the magnet will close against the screw.
and now it's time to apply some stain. The stain that I'm using is called Honey and I really like the color this has. So with the staining complete, it's at this point in the process where I need to add a little bit of customization per the customer's request. Now my original intent was to laser engrave or CNC some sort of an image in there, but right now we're in the middle of all this shutdown and I don't have the access to those machines, so I had to change my plan of attack for this project. Now I kicked around a few different ideas of how I could accomplish that with the tools and things that I have available, and what I decided was to just hand paint the image. I'm going to use the ink inkjet transfer method to transfer this image to the door. This is going to give us some nice lines to follow. It's going to work really well for this application. If you guys would like to get a little bit more information on this process, I made a whole video about the inkjet transfer method. I'll put links in the description. You guys can check it out if you want to learn a little bit more about it. First, I'm going to print the image on the backing of a sheet of sticker paper. I like to trim away some of the excess paper. This makes it a little bit easier to align. Then I'll tape it securely in place, and using a small J roller, I'll press the ink into the wood. The J roller really makes a big difference and helps it get a lot better transfer. And that worked really well. Now I have a really nice outline. Now we can just put some paint in there, paint that little dude in, and we're ready for some clear. We're just going to use some commonly available acrylic craft paint to paint this little guy in. As soon as that paint is dry, I'm just going to apply a couple of coats of satin lacquer. And now all we have to do is reinstall the hardware and this project is done. Cool. And just like that, this project is complete. As I'm testing it out, everything fits really well. Works out great. Even though I intended to do something different, I'm really liking the splash of color this little bit of paint makes. It looks really cool, just pops out at you. Really happy with the way this thing turned out. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this project. I had a good time putting this together. It did take me a little bit longer due to the circumstances we're all facing in the world right now, but nonetheless, this thing's complete. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Shake well before using. Bam. These things are awesome for installing hinges in hardware. This will be on probably... Ah, get back here. Throwing tape around. These shavings smell so good. <laughs> Forgot what I was gonna say.